Testing is an integral part of developing high quality code, but it can be difficult to adopt test automation. Do you think that your system is impossible to test? Perhaps you avoid testing some parts of it because they are too difficult. Well, I think that there are some common causes for these problems and some solutions that will not only improve your testing, but also improve the quality of your software overall. So how do we test at the edge? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery and welcome to my channel. Uh, if you haven't already, please do hit subscribe and if you enjoy the content, hit like at the end. Thank you first to our sponsors, Equal Experts and Harness. They are helping us to develop the channel. Uh, the, their details are in the description below. Please do check them out. I have a couple of free guides to different aspects of automated testing. Uh, details of how to get hold of them are in the description below. In this episode, I want to explore some of the challenges of automated testing. When I and nearly everyone else teaches it, certainly when we teach test-driven development, we begin with simple exercises, often using coding carters like FizzBuzz or AddFractions. They're a very good place to start, but one of the reasons that we start here is because they're an easy place to start. These exercises are kind of hello world for test-driven development, really. They're just about complex enough to demonstrate the ideas, but they nearly always duck the hard bits of testing. And this is one of the things that often trips up nearly everyone when you come to apply it in the real world. The trouble is that testing gets much harder at the edges of our systems, the points where our software interacts in some way with the world. UIs, databases, file systems, in fact any kind of hardware interaction is a pain when it comes to testing. These edges are much more difficult to cope with. So here is a system. Imagine that we are responsible for testing it. To clarify what I mean by edges, these things aren't the edges. The internal components that together make up the logic of our system should be easy to test in isolation. If we created these things with test-driven development in the first place, these things will be simple to test. We'll create mini universes in which they operate, feed in some inputs and collect the results. Easy. But then there is everything else. UIs, upstream systems, downstream systems, data stores, messaging, file system access, those bits of our system that interact with the outside world in some way, or at least the bits of our computer outside of our system. How do we test these things? These are the edges of our system that I'm talking about. There may be different technical challenges with each of these points, but the fundamental problem is more basic than that. Where do we put our test code? Now, this is software, so nothing is impossible, but the fundamental problem is that these edges each represent a point at which our system stops and something else gets in the way. For a user interface, the real edge is the user. They will be interacting with the system via a mouse, keyboard, gesture, voice, whatever. For a file system, there's an operating system and storage hardware in the way. That's busy intruding on our ability to access the results that we're interested in. For, for external systems that we integrate with, there's a whole system in the way that prevents us from testing the cases that are really interesting or collecting the results that we really want because the external system is busy generating its own inputs and consuming the very outputs that allow us to assert the results in our test. For example, if we have an upstream system that's plugged into our system, how can we test the, our code to see what happens when the upstream system starts to send us garbage? Similarly, how can we test how our code responds if we can't connect to a downstream system if we are already connected to a real one? I think that the answer to this is actually relatively simple. It's important to clearly define the boundaries of our system under test. 
it should be a deployable unit of software and it should only include the things that the development team have control over. So in this case, the upstream system and the downstream system are outside the scope of our testing. So we should get rid of them. Now we can get our tests closer to the edges of our system and test them much more thoroughly. You'll probably want to use contract testing to defend those interface points, but that's a topic for a different video. So we've simplified the picture, but we still have all of this other stuff. How do we test that? I think that there are two strategies, both useful, but each in a different context. The first strategy is simple in concept, but actually quite complex in execution. I recommend this strategy for acceptance tests, but never for unit tests. That is to test the whole deployed version of our system, configured as close to the production configuration as we can get, testing from the perspective of users of the system through normal public interfaces to the system. I've talked about this form of acceptance testing in other videos. Uh, for this, we need to simulate the user and go in through the same channels that our users do. So we can use something like Selenium to test web UIs or maybe Appium for testing mobile UIs, for example, both hidden behind a domain specific language constructed to allow us to write these test cases simply. So combining our strategy for removing external systems, simulating the user and creating an acceptance test DSL, we've pretty much got acceptance tests covered. The second strategy is more complex in concept, but simpler in execution. I recommend this strategy for unit testing, ideally as part of TDD, but not for acceptance testing. For acceptance testing, our aim is to test something as close as we can get to the real deployed version of our system, configured in the same way, deployed in the same way, so that we can have a definitive uh, statement of whether our change is ready for release into production or not. We don't want to compromise the configuration of that system to support testing. No backdoors in acceptance testing is a pretty good rule of thumb. Unit testing is different though. For this, we want full control, but we don't have full control at the edges. Let's think of a simple case. Let's imagine some code that needs to write to a file on a disk. If my code writes to a file and I want to test it, then all I can do is check to see if the contents of the file are what I expect. This is slow and adds complexity to my testing. What if the file already exists when I run the test? What if it doesn't when I expected it to? We don't write to real files in unit tests, by definition, or databases, or message queues, or anything else at the edge of our system. Instead, our ambition is to make all of our logic of our system unit testable in memory. And we do this by cheating. Instead of writing direct from our code to an edge, instead we create our own abstraction of that edge, in this case, an abstraction of writing to a file or showing something on a display, whatever it is that we're trying, whatever edge that we are trying to deal with. And then we test to that abstraction instead of the real thing. Here is a simple example. If we, begin, if we are sensible, we're going to begin from a test. Uh, I want some simple code to read a list of words from a file, sort the words, and then write the result back out to a second file. So I begin by writing my unit test. Remember, I don't want to interact with real files. I want to be able to do all of this in memory. So I'm going to hide the file access from the code that I want to test. Here, I've created something called a file system in my example an abstraction of the real file handling. And in the context of the test, I'm supplying a fake file system. Here's my fake. It replaces the, the real file access with a simple hash map. Instead of writing to a file system, I'm just going to store it in memory. Here's my code. It uses my simple abstraction. And now I can drive the development of, of code from my test 
all the time running that test in memory, testing everything that I care about in this code, without needing ever to access any real files. Just to reassure you, here's the version of the real simple file access code that I ended up with when I wrote this example. Now you can exercise the vast majority of your system under test, without the need to talk to any real code at the edges. If we are smart, we make our implementation of our abstractions as simple and as generic as we can. That way we limit the chances that this little adapter is likely to introduce a bug. If we design our abstraction carefully, then it is nearly always simpler than the technology that it wraps, because our code is nearly always only using a subset of that real thing. Test-driven development gives us a good tool to grow the design of these mini adapters, these abstractions, step by step as you learn the behaviours that you need. Each time you find you need to add something to the abstraction to support a test case, you can go to the real adapter and add it to the implementation. You can write some simple generic integration tests that you run later in your deployment pipeline to test the adapter with the real file system or display or other edge device. So this code is tested too. But you've won the freedom to test everything else now quickly, efficiently, and thoroughly in memory. Testing at the edges is more complex than testing the core of our systems, but allowing our need to test to influence the design of our code allows us to build systems that are not only more testable, but also have a better separation of concerns and so are also more flexible. Thank you very much for watching.